sports fans, it's uh, Sunday afternoon. I'm working on a painting for the English publisher 2000 AD, a uh, cover of a graphic novel to a uh, series called uh, Planet of the Dead, I believe, something like that. So anyway, they asked me to do this cover using the uh, characters from the story. Um, this is session, I think, um, 3D on the painting. I use a lot of this Galkid light medium to speed the drawing of the paint. And uh, so I've got one more session to go on. I wanted to show it to you before I uh, do all the finishes. So, so yeah, let me see if I can get some of the glare off this for you. Um, this has worked out the figures. Uh, the question now is how much finish do I want to do on it? which is kind of a key moment for a painting. You don't want to leave it looking un too unfinished, although it's okay to have loose areas. So, you know, I've got three monsters here, and so having these two closer is what in painting you would call uh, foreground material. So the addition of foreground material of some kind will deepen your space. So these are obviously extreme foreground, going back, going back, uh, going back and then going back and then the sky. So that's what one, two, three, several different levels. So um, what is going to be next, I'm going to put in more whites, pure, more pure whites. They'll stay more pure because the paint's dry now. And uh, create yet another layer, uh, level in the back, cooling off this area using some green for sort of foli a foliage look. So anyway, I'll um, come back when it's uh, all the finishing is on and talk about it a little more. Planet of the Dead. Well here's where we stand with the painting today. It's been uh, extensively layered over. All sorts of stuff's been polished. Tweaked, polished. Um, I lightened behind him to punch him out. Added this green down here to cool down things, and as I mentioned earlier, to create another plane. Uh, tweaked all sorts of stuff, gave the pterodactyls little eyeballs. Um, you probably really can't see all this uh, on the camera. But uh, anyway, it's about as done as I think I can make it at the moment. So we're going to cross our fingers and send it off to the publisher. So yeah, there's a lot of other stuff going on in the studio um, uh, this week. Uh, just packing up some orders for books. Uh, Fantasy Art Paintings, Volume 1 of the three volume set that I've done. Uh, these are shipping out. I hadn't looked at it in a while. So checking it out. Um, rather pleased with a lot of this. 100 paintings per book. It's, uh, can I say it's a bargain? At the price of Amparella. I did that in New Mexico. Lots and lots and lots of paintings. Wow. So, um, make of it what you will. Nice phase two stuff here. So, uh, sold a few of those this week. Also moving some of these tomb uh, collections. Man, these things are thick. I think it's about 300 pages of uh, the best of tomb magazine. This is volume one. We've got two volumes of these out now. It's on this really nice uh, cream colored paper. Uh, this is a story by Richard Matheson that I, I did. Um, stories by Crawley. A lot of stuff by me in here. I think this is one of the best ones I did about the trucker. A serial killer trucker. People seem to like that one. So, uh, can't recommend that enough, of course, naturally. And uh, what else is going on? Hey, well, I've been doing uh, left handed drawings. You might say, why do left handed drawings? Well, reason being is that you get parts of your brain going that you didn't know you had. Obviously, with me, right-handed uh, artist, been using my right hand for years. Get very, very adept at doing things, very fast. 
but what happens is that uh, the channels, the rivulets, whatever you want to call them, get eroded deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And in my case, doing fantasy art, uh, a lot of women, female figures, stuff like that, you tend to sort of become, the figures become very sexualized. You're not necessarily aware of it while you're doing it, but um, people from outside the field can sure notice it, like right away. So anyway, I'm trying to unlearn that, and the way I'm doing it is drawing with the left hand. And what you don't want to happen is for the habits from your right hand to just come transfer out of your left hand. So it's, it's a strange place to be. You're not really thinking about things so much. But anyway, here's two figures, left-handed figures. Uh, you'd probably never guess they were by me. They're unlike anything else I've, I've really done. Uh, here's some more work, pencil drawings. Um, four left-handed figures. Left-handed figure. A playful clown, left-handed figure. Reclining figure. You know, female but not uh, crassly sexualized. Male figure. Um, rather playful uh, flying figure, perhaps. These are a lot of fun to do. Very liberating. Jack-o'-lantern. Man. Sitting man. Uh, multiply limb dancing figure. So this is all from one session. Uh, i got another session here. L figure left hand. Continuous line also. That's uh, lines without picking up the pencil. Or the marker in this case. Okay. This was drawn upside down. That explains the wonkiness. So anyway, are these Mike Hoffman figures? Is this what the public's used to? Probably not, which is good. So anyway, then I can go back to drawing with the right hand, and I can apply my left-handed techniques to the right-hand drawings. So what happens? I get figures that are naturalistic beyond what I've been uh, able to accomplish before. So that's a little trick for you artist guys out there. Uh, what else does Hoffman do in the studio? Well, just going like going along with the um, the rule of economics, the 80-20 rule. Uh, I'm known for 20% of what I do. So here's some other stuff I did this week. This is an abstract, well, quasi-abstract painting, I suppose. Um, done with my left hand uh, using paint scrapers, uh, circular daubing things, paint pens, but it's all uh, the left hand. It's a nice painting in terms of the color scheme. Uh, it looks beautiful in a room, but uh, it's very decorative. But um, would people ever buy them? You know, I do sell them, but I don't actually offer these for sale. There's a whole bunch of art that I don't offer for sale. It's the not for sale art. Here's another one. This is very much like what people might expect of an abstract painting, Picasso and the whole movement back in the 50s and 60s. But it also is a left-handed painting. And um, it's a lot of fun to do. Not um, so much rational right brain thinking or verbalizing or anything like that. But as you can see, the elements are balanced. The colors are balanced. It's non-representational. But... Um, it's the kind of thing that um, helps you keep your sanity when you're trying to earn a living. Um, but anyway, you may be able to tell that things are being extensively rethought here, which happens all the time. But there again, it's like people aren't aware of it because, well, uh, it's not the way the marketplace functions. So at any rate, I think that's probably the end uh, for this week. Hey, under there. So, see you next time around in the studio.